Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special podcast. This man that needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyways. He is a two-time California State champion. He wrestles at a Frontier High School, formerly a Wisconsin commit, but now he's switching. Gabriel, come he's down going here from Badger. Like he's going to Hawkeyes. And he also doesn't know how to mute his screen. We got Miko Miguel Estrada. Welcome to the podcast, Miko. Hi. Hello. Uh, yeah, no, I've, yeah, I've chosen to commit to the University of Iowa. But honestly, it's just because their style of wrestling just fits me so much better than I think, honestly, any of these colleges would. And they're all great. But at the end of the day, my style of wrestling has always been that old Hawkeye style. So, yeah. All right. So congratulations, Miguel. That's a huge commitment. One of the biggest schools in the country. Um, I just want to say you were committed to Wisconsin. You were going to be a Badger. What happened? Tell us a story. Give us a scoop. Um, but honestly, um, you know, I had my surgery leading up to state. And then I also took that loss that, you know, I wasn't used to. And I think, honestly, I think I was ready. I think in my own head, I thought I was ready for the pressure of the recruiting and the state altogether. But honestly, I wasn't. And when I made the decision to commit to Wisconsin, it was to stay there. But after state, I really got to like think and not feel as pressured. And I came to the realization that Iowa is just, it's better fit for my style of wrestling and just where I want to be and feel most comfortable at myself, it's going to be the best for me. But I love Wisconsin and the coaches. It just, that they end they just didn't end up working out for me. Now, what loss is that that you're talking about? Was this earlier on in the season? Yeah, when I lost to uh, Laird Root, where, you know, we were both going to Wisconsin. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a close, it was a close loss, but I just wasn't really used to having that feeling as much anymore. So when I lost, it kind of hit pretty hard. Okay. And what, what did you think that like you were recruited with a guy in your weight class, you're both ranked number one and two in the state. What'd you think when you were both recruited to Wisconsin? What went through your mind? I really, I think if anything, it really motivated me more just knowing that somebody's there that's going to be able to push me. So um, did I definitely, when I lost, felt like I had to prove myself more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think at the end of the day, it was something that needed to happen. It was really good that it did end up happening. Hmm. And then on the contrary, you've got, we just mentioned Laird Root, who just switched his commitment to be a Tar Heel. Yeah, that is true. So, um, and I don't know the scoop about that. Um, we'll have to hit him up, but, uh, kind of interesting to, you know, top, what are we projected? 49s, 57s in college. Is that what we're looking yeah. at? So two guys around the same weight classes, both, you know, awesome recruits, um, had an awesome match in the state finals against each other. Um, and then, you know, both Wisconsin commits and now within a week of each other, one's going to North Carolina to wrestle for Coleman Scott and the other one's going to Iowa to wrestle for brands. Yeah. Um, now, really quick. Tell me, um, you spoke to both the brands brothers, right? Yes. And you're still committed to going to Iowa, right? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. All right. Well, what was it like talking to them? Because like, obviously, when you when they first con when did they first contact you is what I want to know. Uh, are you talking about like before, like just the recruiting in general or? Yeah. Like yeah. Like when did they first reach out to you initially? Um, so it was actually Morningstar that called me. And um, so he texted me everything for the visit. And before the visit. I sent both Terry and Tom a message just because they don't really do the recruiting. It's more boarding star. Mm -hmm. um, so I sent them a message uh, and then we got to talk about that when I was over there. And then I really got to talk to Tom and Terry a lot, just one-on-one. -on -one. And it really, it felt really nice because I felt like they understood who I was a lot because um, it was really cool. And then uh, after that, you know, they, they texted me after, and they drove me back to the airport. Um, and then they don't really text that much, but, you know, they care a lot. So, I mm -hmm. mean, if I ever had any questions with them, I could always give them a call. And they would they would call me back or answer right away. Quick question about either of the brand bros. When you text them, you have an iPhone, Miguel? Yeah. Are, is the green, is it a green message? <laughs> the brands? I, a green bubble? I, I think it is. Actually, I, I have a feeling I could just... Right now. Commentary. I, 
flipping just... open a Motorola razor, you know, and answering a phone call. That's just how I, I don't know. That's how I, I agree. I agree. I see flip phones. I see yeah. a new flip phone probably weekly. I see them break <laughs> flip phones. Um, <laughs> no, they, they got iPhones. They got iPhones. They have oh, iPhones. okay. All right. Yeah. Oh. yeah Good to rest. So, uh, Miguel, you mentioned in your um, Instagram post that you were a longtime fan of the Hawkeye program. Tell us about that. How'd you, you know, what drew you to them as a kid growing up? Who were your, some of your favorite guys um, and just kind of how you fell in love with them? Um, so originally it was my dad that started showing us videos, at least them wise, like technique videos. Because me, myself, um, I'm not um, what. I'm sorry. They they said something in the kid chat and I can't I can't see it. But then Carlo again doesn't know how to use Zoom. So he's just yeah, like putting uh, messages for everyone to see instead yeah. of just like uh, um so originally like what happened was my dad started showing his videos of these Iowa wrestlers and how their technique was because me, like as a kid, I'm not like really athletically gifted. I'm not like super flexible or anything. I might be really strong, but honestly, that's about it at the end of the day. And my dad really wanted to keep that mentality they had of the wrestling style, those heavy hands, the push pull, the not stopping of wrestling. So that's where I kind of got it from. And then I just really ended up growing to love how they wrestle because it kind of just became me, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then who are some of your favorite wrestlers of watching them grow as you were growing up? Oh, I mean, obviously the brands, uh, obviously the brands. I really like Mark Ironside. I, I really like the way he wrestled. And then there was uh, Kerry Colat. I'm not Kerry Colat. Um, what's his name? Um, he, he beat the Okla. He beat the OU guy in the finals, OSU guy in the finals. There's a documentary. Mark on him. Perry. Yeah, Mark Perry. There we go. Uh, really like Mark Perry. Obviously, Spencer Lee with his top writing is mm -hmm. phenomenal. But I, at the end of the day, Probably Terry is probably my favorite wrestler. I watched a lot of videos of how he wrestled. So nice. I was a huge uh, all through high school. I was a huge Matt McDonough fan. Like yeah. I could watch him nonstop, and I'm obviously super upsetting to like watch the last year or so of his career. But that dude was like one of my favorite guys coming out. You know, when I was in high school, and I was like, this guy's the best, and I could watch him all day. Um, well, let's talk about uh, the Instagram, Sushi Cat, and oh. how it came to be. <laughs> um, so I like anime. That's just kind of how I've always been. Uh, whether it's people think it's weird, I mean, it's okay. But um, I've always liked it, and then I've always liked cats. So there used to be, like, a bunch of drawings with little, like, anime cats. So I thought that was pretty cool. And um, I've never liked keeping my profile like super public so I was like okay I'll just make a cat and originally it was some buff like a little buff buff like beefy cat and I kind of just thought that was kind of weird and then I saw a sushi cat so I just put that on there and I kind of just rolled with it and then once I realized I kind of had to grow my platform a bit more um I started using me more but I kept the sushi cat just because I kind of thought it was funny like if you're going to get beat by a guy named Sushi Cat, like it's going to be a little funny. So <laughs> it's just like a little marketing thing I think is pretty cool. But, yeah. I like it. I like it. And Brian, are you are you like representing for him today? Are you, are you coming out for <laughs> Sushi Cat today? Um, you know, we, I, we haven't officially signed anything yet uh, in terms <laughs> of paperwork. So no, I'm not officially representing him. Um, though, if ever came down the line, you know, like, especially once after we kind of break that, you know, coach teacher relationship, um, then maybe, um, but, uh, either way, I'm always going to be in, uh, Miguel's corner. I can, I feel like I can speak for Carlo as well. Um, but if he ever does, uh, want to re you know, want to have representation, I'd be happy to do that for him. <laughs> Gotta be money involved though, right? I don't I mean, know. What? I don't know how Carlo puts up with this. <laughs> oh, dude, don't even, never mind. Um, I do want to hear from Brian and Carlo, your Miguel's coaches. I want to hear, is this the biggest commitment you've ever had? I mean, Iowa Hawkeyes, this is huge. This number two team right now in the country. How do you guys feel about this? Uh, over the moon. Um, yeah, it's the biggest commitment we've ever had. 
Um, I, I'm already thinking about like going to Carver Hawkeye and watching dual meets. So I'm pretty stoked. Um, yeah, it means a lot. I mean, I think, I think more than anything else, though, it's, it means a lot for Miguel and his family. It's a culmination of years of hard work. So, uh, yeah, it's good for the program, but I'm just really proud of him. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I mean, you know, I've had some wrestlers go to BC and that's, that's a pretty big accomplishment, but uh, I'd say Miguel is definitely up there. Um, I've always kind of been a closet Hawkeye fan, uh, pretty much since the beginning, since Brett Metcalf shoved Darian Caldwell off the stage. Um, and, uh, I, I've, I've been trying to, uh, I mean, not, I, I, I feel like Carl and I, we've both been trying to not influence his opinion and just let him make his own decision. I think that's important. So I, I feel like, I don't know, Miguel, like, I, I don't think we influenced your decision at all. Um, but I will say this, thank God he's going to Iowa because if we were wearing Wisconsin t-shirts, at Carver Hawkeye to watch and some, some fool was acting up. I mean, I'm going to have to take that guy outside. So uh, it's a good thing that, I mean, we still might have to deal with that, but it's a good thing that uh, we'll be at least be wearing the right colors in that arena. Definitely. It'd be a fun environment. Heck yeah. It's like one of the, one of the best environments to wrestle in ever. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm not going to lie, Miguel, when you were first, you know, searching for a school, and you were taking some of your visits. Um, I remember telling Brian, like, dude, Iowa makes sense. Like your style, right? Just watching you even last year, uh, you know, when you won your first state title, like you have, like you mentioned, a very Iowa style. You hand fight super hard. Um, you get, you know, you have great level changes, great high C's. Um, and you just, you're in, in, the, in everyone's face and you're beating them up with your hands and you're a goer. Um, I thought Iowa was going to be your original pick. And when you went the Wisconsin route, it was surprising. I wasn't upset about it. Bono and Reader, great coaches, great coaching staff. I'm sure the facilities are great. Um, what at Iowa facility wise, wrestling room, weight room, the campus, did you fall in love with when you went out there? Um, I mean, obviously, besides falling in love with like Carver, um, the wrestling room itself was crazy. Uh, it felt really like mind blowing because you see it in all these videos, mm. and then you're finally in there, and it's like, wow, like the, it's it's so much memories inside one place. It's it's crazy, and to think that even when I'm there, they're building that bigger facility because they put in so much money into a new facility, they're gonna make a new wrestling room. So I think just that was kind of really something I fell in love with, not the room itself, but like the environment in the wrestling room itself is what I really fell in love with. Plus they're making that new tunnel and that's pretty cool. to look at. Very nice. Very nice. Well, if you have any, um, I'm sure the whole family is probably super stoked. Um, are you guys all ordering your Iowa, Iowa gear and swag getting all swagged out already? And what's it like with the family at home? Oh, uh, my dad loves Iowa. He's already wearing an Iowa hat. Um, <laughs> My brother loves Iowa. I love Iowa. We've already ordered stuff and I've had stuff since I was a kid. It's just like once I committed, I just couldn't really wear it anymore. So now I can actually wear all the stuff. Like today, uh, I think like two days ago, I wore like the sweats and the shirt, but they're dirty right now. So I can't really wear them. But yeah, I've already ordered a bunch of stuff. And then hopefully we can get that secret soon. So. I love it. Well, I'm going to have to hit you up for some from. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm a large now, Miguel. Yeah. <laughs> large. Our coach. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, man, awesome, awesome, awesome. Congratulations again. Um, you've got to be over the moon. It's going to be awesome watching you wrestle in the Big Ten on one of the biggest platforms. And um, I'm super excited. I'm sure you have goals right off the gate. I mean, what are you thinking in terms of a red shirt year or maybe trying to make the starting lineup or are you just not even thinking about that you're like i got my senior season to focus on let's do that and then we'll go from there um i would like to say my senior season yeah but honestly the biggest thing is going into the wrestling room already ready already able to make the lineup preferably i do not want a red shirt i would like to go in there right away and then the goal is to win as a true freshman and then obviously win those four titles and then win a team title would be really cool but you know obviously i would hope to do that but um at the end of the day yeah i want to be able to make the lineup right away and become an nca champ it's the biggest goal i like it i like it and obviously like our last podcast i wasn't i was absent for but uh penn state's doing 
some big things and the transfer portal portal has been um, um, grateful to them. So obviously they're putting together a pretty stacked lineup, but you think you guys and what you can bring to the table at Iowa can help dethrone them? Honestly, I think it could be really close. I think um, like we're really going to have a really good recruiting class, at least in 2023, um, how they'll develop in the college. Uh, I honestly have no idea, but I know Gabe Arnold just won the, um, the Open. You know, you have uh, Ben Cuter. I'm pretty sure that's his name. Uh, dude's an absolute animal. Um, I think he got hurt. I think um, almost 100% that's what happened. Um, and then we have, um, who else is coming? We have Ayala. We have Ryder Block. We have all these monsters coming in the room. Um, obviously, you have possibly more Ferraris. I have no idea how that's going to go. <laughs> we have um, we have uh, Cody Chetto. Um all these other wrestlers, depending on what weight we all go, I think, honestly, we could step it up to Penn State. If I'm being completely honest, it'll be close. Um, like, Penn State, obviously, has a lot of those good transfers. They just got that Aaron, the gal guy. Mm -hmm. um, that Tyler Kasak kid's a really good wrestler. He just won the Open. Me and him will probably be the same weight. Um, that'll be a really fun one. But I think we totally could. Yeah, 100%. And you haven't wrestled uh, Tyler Kas Kasak or Kasak? You haven't, you guys haven't scrapped yet? Uh, yeah, we have. Um, but like, I was kind of like a kid. It was at Tulsa. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't really count anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he did beat me. He, um, I couldn't bat return, so I got a stall call against me. And then <laughs> I ended up losing by a point. So, I mean, it happens. But, well, I've seen you get revenge now, so I know it's possible. And I look forward yeah. to seeing that match. That'll be cool. Yeah, it should be a fun one. He's a good wrestler, so. Hey, Miguel is like the king of, uh, like, you ask him, like, hey, did you wrestle, like, this guy ever? He's like, oh, yeah, we wrestled <laughs> as a kid. And then he's like, yeah, he beat me, like, in ultimate rideouts. Or, like, he, you know, I beat him, like, for, like blah, blah, blah. Like, he doesn't forget that stuff. Like, he keeps it locked, locked in his brain. Uh, like, even um, you're getting ready to wrestle Barbosa, and just in your mind, you're like, that guy, that guy, would you beat him last time or he beat you? Uh, I beat him in the semis to win my first state when I was a kid. And then I went to Reno and then he pinned me. So, so you're like, I think, cause I remember it. Cause I, I, I know, I think I'm pretty sure you were guys were one-on-one. -on -one. I couldn't remember exactly, but I remember you were like fired up. Like, and part of it seemed like, yeah, he beat me the last time we wrestled. I'm like, dude, how long ago was that? It was what, like, 10, <laughs> like, like, like eight years, you know? <laughs> you're a goof. He never forgets, man. He, yeah, I, never forgets. Those losses burn inside of him forever. I love it. So Miguel, yeah, what uh so next year 45s again, or I know they're adjusting the weights a little bit, but are you trying to stay around the same weight? Or yeah, we're trying to go preferably I'd be 44, just because like with the surgery, I did I got pretty big. I got up to probably like 186, I think was my highest. And a lot of it was like just fat, like it wasn't like it it was pretty bad. Um so now that we're shedding off the weight and trying to get into like my peak shape where I could be, um, 44 should be pretty easy to make. I don't think why it'd be so hard. Like 46, I think is what it was, was super easy. I made the weight like, like nothing my first time trying it. So I should be just fine. Nice. And then for college, are you looking at 149, 157s? Um, preferably be 49. I don't think I'm tall enough to go 40, 57s, but I mean, you never know. But yeah, 49 would preferably be it. Definitely not 41s. That might be a little too small. For sure. Too much yeah. money. But, um, now for the summer, what are you looking at doing? Are you looking, are you going to go to Fargo? What are you going to do? Junior duels? Um, honestly, all summer, we might just end up training. Um, we have, uh, I'll probably go up to, I don't know what the plans are, but possibly try to go up there to Iowa and wrestle and train at and then um, get my shoulder, just keep getting it stronger and a lot healthier. Because um, even at state, like it wasn't like 100%, like at least integrity wise it was, but strength wise, it could have been a lot stronger. So we'll keep doing that. And then just no freestyle, just getting my folk style up to, up to par where it should be. Nice. And then this a little bit for the coaches too. What tournaments we plan on going to? Anything special next year? Put Miguel in uh, some big matches? Preseason? Uh, um, we, is it okay to talk about it if there's possibility of who's number one we might be going there if i think they sent an invitation but nothing's official yet cool and then um, cool. super 32s awesome 
And then during season, are we Iron Man? We thinking anything in the East Coast like that? Haven't thought that far ahead. Um, Miguel is going to be a senior and has not attended Doc B one time. So we'd like um, to at least make it out to the Doc B. once. Gotta go to Doc B. Yeah, I yeah. think um, something that we put in the works, I don't know for like compliance issues, if it's going to work out. Um, I think honestly, the best thing for Miguel is I think we're just going to um, use uh, the funds that we have to try to build an arena and uh, try to just pack it with as many just bloodthirsty Romans as possible mm-hmm. um, and just put them out there and put some lines out there. Um, That's where he you know, feels put comfortable. Some, put some guys with, uh, with nets and, uh, and tridents. <laughs> and, um, you know, possibly, uh, you know, just some, some emperors, right. And he's going to have to duke it out. And I think honestly, that's the best thing for him. That's going to help him jump that next level. And I, I, I think honestly, you put him in that kind of environment, he thrives. So I think, uh, it doesn't matter who he ends up fighting or killing or stabbing or going to war with. I think he's going to rise to the occasion because that's just who he is. No, but I mean, if, if you, if you look at the guys around his weight right now, and we, we, we likely will strongly consider, um, going to some big big more nationally renowned tournaments but if you look at the guys around his weight it's actually really deep you got Mm -hmm. almost everybody coming back from 45s now what what weight they land on uh, your guess is as good as mine you know parko still seems small rude i heard is going up you know who knows where barbosa and pre send up uh but it's a deep weight and zapata is talking about i hear going 44s um you know he's he just had a i think he wrestled in the open um but he he looked great at freestyle at state we saw him wrestle and it, it, i think it's going to be a deep weight even if he stays in california he's be challenged so it would definitely be awesome to see him at um i was su- super bummed this last doc b when the entry list finally came out because brian doesn't like to tell any insiders or secrets Hey, you know what? Here, since we got Miguel and Sean both on the same podcast, okay, let me let me lay it straight. Okay, Miguel, every time we go on a podcast, every time we talk, Sean is like your biggest like fanboy slash hater. He's always <laughs> talking smack. And I, I think part of it is Guppy's his boy, so I get that part. But he's always <laughs> they don't like, even hey, compete Miguel against each other. Like, hey, I'm I'm speaking. <laughs> Uh, Let it out, Brian. He's always he's always asking, you know, like is Miguel, Miguel going to wrestle at Doc B? What weighted class is he going? And I don't tell him anything because it's not my damn business. It's like you'll find out, dude. I'm not going to give you the inside scoop. <laughs> but Miguel, yeah, we, we like to keep things tight, and, tight. And Miguel, dude. What? Yeah, close yeah. What to, Brian doesn't this. tell you though is that he asks questions too, and then when you don't answer Brian's questions, he gets butt hurt. That's and not like, true. He's like, wow, we're not friends. Like, we weren't college teammates. Like, that's we're, messed up. We were drill partners. Like, we're gonna make a we're gonna make a t-shirt. It's gonna say Frontier Wrestling on the front, and on the back, it's gonna say it's a one-way street. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I we love do not it. reciprocate at Frontier Wrestling. Hey, in my defense, I'm a big fan of good wrestling. So when there's a good Absolutely. wrestler in the state of California, I don't really care what school they go to or who they wrestle for, as long as they're not a punk. Um, I'm going to root for them and I'm going to like watching them wrestle. So that's really what it comes down to. And Miguel, you're a good kid. You've always been a good kid. Oh, yeah. It's fun to watch you scrap. So happy to see you healthy and making awesome Thank choices you. like going to you Iowa. Know, real Thank quick, you. you've seen you've seen Miguel wrestle. Um, you know, just looking at him now, you see his physique. Uh, how many takedowns do you think he gets on you and how many takedowns do you think you get on him? Okay. He gets, he gets <laughs> this many. <laughs> I could see going over I think he jacks you up, dude. He gets this many. He gets none. No, no. All respect, Miguel. All respect. No one, Miguel. My, I, I my say neck goes over time. My neck would hurt wrestling Miguel for six minutes. Uh, <laughs> it would hurt, but I, I, I'm getting the dub. I'm getting the <laughs> yeah. I'm protecting my right leg. You're not shooting a high C on me. <laughs> oh, not, he only I'm, knows one move, Sean. Yeah, You're going to be okay. I'm, I'm down blocking that high C every single time. I'm prepared. Yeah. I'm not letting it happen. Oh, uh, yeah. I've been doing different moves now. So, hey, I know. <laughs> <laughs> throw them at me. Let's make it happen. Let's go. <laughs> um, I want to talk about your state finals match because that was two years in a row you went to overtime, right? In your state finals? Yeah. Oh, no. no. I oh, went into the first time. In my it was. Two years in a row in the semis. Semis, okay. Yeah. State finals, though, overtime. So it's your first time overtime in the state finals. 
what was going through your head? Because I know what was going through my head. I was sitting outside commentating. I was like, the overtime monster's doing it again. Yeah. I was like, and I feel like he's going to pull it out. My wife was sitting next to me. I was like, dude, I think he's going to pull this one out. What's going through your mind at that point? Like, it's a very short amount of time. You're getting to the center. What are you thinking? Okay. Um. So when the OT starts, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I got to take him down. But, and my body just isn't, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing the first period. I think he gets in my legs during that first period of OT. If I'm not wrong, he almost takes me down. I think he drives me to the edge, if I'm not wrong, and I throw him backwards. I don't know if that's exactly what happened, but I'm like, okay, now he knows he can't take me down. I'm, he's, he, was pretty lock, he was pretty deep. I think he had a body lock at one point, and now he knows. I'm almost 100 for sure. He doesn't think he can take me down. He's probably going to be defensive. Uh, we go to second OT. I, I escape. No, 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 I don't escape. He is no, damn. I, I'm trying to remember. Okay, he had, the, he, he had he had choice in the first 30 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, he had choice, right? And then he gets out. No, wait, he gets out. Yeah, he rides me out, right? Yeah, he rides me out, but he locks his hands. No, I, I had that backwards. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I do get out, right? No, 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 <laughs> no I don't, I don't, I don't get out. I don't he, had, he, was, he was second. He was second. You were first. Yeah, yeah, he didn't get out. Yes. yes, no, I don't. He locks his hands. He locks his hands. Correct. Well, ba- yeah. so basically, you're in a position where you have to take him down to win, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, I don't yeah. think he had to because you had the point from locking hands, and he had the escape point. So it was still, yeah. it, it was um, going to come down to an ultimate ride out. Yeah. And then, and then didn't Laird, Laird had he had choice, right? That he was had choice. Yeah. That was. It was. I'm not sure time. if he was aware of that situation, but yeah. Um, it was. It was short time, and Miguel hits that boom and takedown, yeah. big lift and finish, and I think there was like. After the takedown, I think it was like as time expired, right? Pretty yeah. Much. Um, a second or two. Yeah, the OT was in his favor. If it went to OT, I'm not gonna lie. I'll be like straight up. He um he did like ride me out. I mean, I didn't even know he locked his hands. I didn't look at the scoreboard, so I honestly thought I was down. So in my head, I was like thinking, okay, I, I gotta move. And he looks like he's really tired. He's starting to back up. So I was like, okay maybe my high C is going to finally work. So I hit the high C, I double off and Carlo before the match actually told me to do that, um, the change off to the double uh, when we were in that little area of wrestling room. So I think that kind of just hit my head. And when I went to go off, I doubled off and then all the adrenaline kind of just ended up coming out after that. And you fucked. Yeah. Them. How, huh? dis- how disappointed were you and how Brian, your coach looked in the pictures. Celebrating? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, was, it was an extraordinary moment. The picture of the whole arena erupting. It was crazy. Um, I, I would ask you how you were feeling that moment, but I'm sure it was just a million miles an hour and you were just pumped. It was, it was incredible. It was really cool. Yeah, I felt really relieved. I think that's the only way to actually put it. Like just, all the pressure kind of just came off at one moment. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah, I was standing um, a little ways back towards the tunnel. Um, getting ready for Guffy's finals match and coach Beeman is standing next to me and we're watching and he's elbowing me and I'm elbowing him. And I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Like watching these two guys go back and forth. And um, yeah, you hit that takedown and the lift. And as time was going out, it was pretty, uh, pretty awesome to watch. And obviously people watching online, it probably doesn't do it justice. Um, but being there was pretty awesome and the pictures of your coaches in the corner is like probably one of the coolest corner pictures ever brian with the double epic this is pretty sweet it's epic okay so i want to hear from the coaches on that first carlo what is going through your mind you go into overtime first of all you're like okay we've been here before we've been overtime this guy this is what this guy does what are you thinking and now hearing what he has to say i'm like oh my god he's not even looking at the scoreboard he's not looking at the clock like what are you thinking yeah, I, I didn't know until after the match was over. He didn't know the situation. So, <laughs> so the order was in the first ride out, Miguel was down. Uh, we ended up getting the lock and hands call. And I was like, sweet, there's plenty of time on the clock. We just have to get our short time escape. And it didn't work out in our favor, which, you know, kind of changes the whole dynamic. Uh, he gets out fairly easy in the second ride out. And uh, 
good thing Miguel thought he was losing at that point because uh, the last thing I wanted was was an ultimate ride out. Yeah. Um, I mean, no offense, it just it it favors you on your feet more than it favors you on the mat. So um, yeah, he got he got his he got his tie, he got his scoring hold, hit a quick fake, was able to get in clean and and hits uh hits the lift which um, if you actually go back and watch it, it's like not even good technique. <laughs> it's all muscle. The guy, the guy just hulked out for a quick second and just dumped him right back to the mat, uh, which I think added to the electricity of the situation. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what was I thinking? I was thinking uh, I can't, I can't wait for him to keep doing this in college is what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. That was, that was um, it was an authentic moment. It was, uh, it was one of those very rare moments where like, it's just pure emotion afterwards. I've been to the state finals. Um, a couple times, you know, we've had a champ. Um, I've coached these, you know, other guys, maybe they end up transferring. So I kind of, I kind of know the feeling generally. Um, but that was just a different situation. So it was fun. Miguel, what are you drinking over there? Huh? What are you drinking oh, over there? It's a oh, smoothie. I see some pink fluids. It's from McDonald's. It's a strawberry smoothie. <laughs> Hey, at some point though, you might have to cover up that brand, dude. Like, uh, uh-uh, you gotta pay me if you want to advertise. <laughs> okay, um, dude. Am I? I don't know if Miguel like like. Do you really hear like what we tell you in the corner? Because sometimes you just look and you're just like, that's it. Uh, I didn't hear anything at overtime. I I, I told you I'm like, just go get a takedown, and you're like, I'm like, all right. So you know, kind of just went as planned. But now they're hearing that you didn't even. I, I didn't, I guess, I don't know if I knew that, that you didn't know the, the situation. Um, he but, mentioned uh, it like a couple weeks 20, later. Um, just looking at like, like Root's hips, like, dude, I, like we freaking got that thing. You freaking muscled the crap out of that position. And we, I mean, it was electric, dude. I got, I mean, I kind of with my classic, you know, flex <laughs> pose. Um, my, to be honest, like, like not even about me, just, just Carlo next to me, just, just overflowing with emotion and just unleashing all of it. Uh, that picture of uh, Miguel jumping into Carlo's arms is is on uh, our wall in our our uh, administration office uh, on campus. So it's it was a pretty cool moment. And uh, yeah, did I you have thought, that pose planned out, Brian? The, huh? the 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 double fist pump was that something in your head that you'd know like if there's a situation, I'm busting out this move. Oh yeah, rehearsed, practiced, in <laughs> <Yeah. here. laughs> He's planning out his answer right now. <laughs> no comment. No. Okay, you do. <laughs> uh, Miguel, I want to ask you about your semi win over Barbosa. Um, it was you were controlling the match um, until the end of the match. I think he squeaked in a takedown, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he threw me. Yes, that's right. And you know, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. A, maybe it wasn't a takedown, but I'm not the ref. Um, I was also standing behind Brian and Carlo as they're coaching you because we had we were getting ready to wrestle. And so I'm standing Matt's side for that one with with uh, Beeman. And we're just like, oh, crap, we're going to overtime. Um, you start to pick up the hand fight. Um, eventually you get the takedown. And then it looks like you're it looked like you were chirping at the corner. But from what Brian tells me, I'm just going to let you explain what you were saying. OK, Um it was nothing. It looked like I was like saying very nice, not nice things to them, but like I actually was saying like really good job. But like obviously there was some like I might have cussed one time, but there was that some was intensity with it. There was you know it's an intense. Yeah, yeah. But I was saying good job at the end of the day. It was nothing bad or anything. I just said like he really launched me or something. Like I got thrown. Like really good job. That was about it. Um, yeah, you gotta make that a thing, Miguel. Start complimenting people in a very aggressive way. Yeah, he's like, he's like pointing like this, yeah, and, then he goes, yeah. and it's like, I thought, I thought like, I was gonna have to like run out there and separate him for a second. It, it was a very aggressive compliment for sure. Yeah. No, but that that was the thing. So I wasn't on that mat. I was commentating the semi, the other semi at the time, and I could look over and I saw him do that, and immediately I knew what he was doing. I was like, dude, he is aggressively complimenting them. I was like, this. Is- <laughs> Like, I loved it because, like, you were giving him his props, and it was cool. Um, it might not have looked like that to some people, but to me, that's what it looked like, and I thought I thought it was very genuine. I liked it a lot. Yeah, no, I mean, when you throw me like that at the end, <laughs> and, like, I got to give you props for it. I mean, like, you throw – I mean, I'm pretty heavy, so if you're going to throw me, that's – I mean, good job to you, so. 
I, I had to ask Brian about it. And then Brian, so like, no, he was telling him like, good job. Like, that was awesome. Like, that was a hard match. And I was like, what? And I went back and watched it. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it makes <laughs> sense. No, you gave him like a thumbs up at one point. Like, all right. That's cool. Um, can we talk about the pre-match stare down that oh. you've instilled fear in your opponents with? <laughs> um, yeah, I've always said that since I was a kid. That came from the, the uh, Tony Ramos thing from for from iowa he has that stare and i also got it from a, a football player he's called ray lewis i don't know if you know who that is mm-hmm. but um i just got it from them and i always do it in front of people whether it actually works or not um i have no idea uh it does put confidence into myself before the match because yeah. to me it's like if you can't look me in the eyes like a man then you don't have any right to be on the same mat as me so that's just kind of how I take it. Um, it. It builds confidence toward the end. I usually like to either go like right in front of you. So there's really no place to look other than me. So if you're really going to look away, it's either because you're just really awkward and don't like it, or you're just scared and don't want to look at me. It's one of those two. So oh. it's cool. I like it. It it gives it gives an extra feel before the match. So. The first time Iowa I saw fans are gonna love you, Miguel. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna love it. They're gonna absolutely love it. The first time I saw it was at because Brian had told me about it. Um, but then at Temecula, um, before your match with with uh, Root, you guys are you know in your separate corners, you know, red and green, and they're doing the intros, and you're just turned, not looking at the mat, not looking at your coaches. You're just turned facing him, and he's kind of pacing back and forth, and you're just like shaking your shoulders out and like staring and i was like oh this is what brian was talking about this is what brian was talking about it was, it was pretty cool to see and then obviously at state um for those who don't know california state there's a long tunnel um you get paired up with your partner that or your, your opponent um and you got to stand in that tunnel for sometimes 5 10 15 minutes i feel like um and it's just you and them your coaches are kind of off to the side behind a behind a gate um and i remember miguel you were facing the wrong way in the tunnel staring at whoever i don't remember who which match it was i think it was early in the tournament you were facing the wrong way in the tunnel your back is to the where the arena is behind me in this picture and you're staring your opponent down and they're basically like looking at the ground like i don't know where to look like looking over at their coach like what do i do this guy's scaring me I think he stared at me like that when I walked in the arena. I was like shaking with my coffee in my hand. I was like, whoa, bro, I'm not even wrestling you today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, the Iowa fans are going to – they are going to be all about it. It's going to be cool. It's going to bring them back to the old Tony Ramos days. Absolutely. I love So I love your mindset, Miguel, but I want to know. So two-time state champ, you're going into your senior year, looking to become a three-time state champ. Like what's – what are you thinking? Like how are you going into your senior year mentally? Um, I'm going in probably more confident than I would the following years, just because a, I haven't been injured this year, you know, cross my fingers, hopefully nothing happens. Um, the past two years, like I broke my nose before the season, my sophomore year, obviously I had that really bad surgery before junior year. And I had probably four weeks to fully train before state. So this going in with a couple with months of trading with not only high schoolers, but D1 wrestlers who are best wrestlers in the country, like Iowa wrestlers, I'm going to go in a lot more confident, a lot different style of wrestling than I did last year. So I know I'll be a more complete wrestler than I was. So it's really exciting. I'm not really putting too much pressure on myself. I'm trying to go into the match flow and not really be so tense going into the match all the time, which is what I think my fault was going into that Temecula match of the finals where I lost. I was just so tense in that match, and I didn't wrestle where I should be wrestling. Now, does the Iowa com- commitment give you more confidence going into the season? Um, I don't know about more confidence. It gives me more of kind of like a level I should be at because going to the Iowa itself is an expectation that's really high where I set myself. But now I'm representing them. Because, I mean, we know how Iowa fans are. You know, you got to you gotta perform. They want you to perform. And, I mean, that's to be expected. There's nothing wrong with that. 
So to me, it just, it lifts my bar of expectations for myself that much higher. But I like it. it. Um, two quick questions for you, Miguel. One, what do, uh, what do we think about the potential three-point takedown? Are we a fan or are we not a fan? I am a fan. <laughs> uh, I figured. Re- really hope we can get that three-point takedown. I mean, it would just, it would kind of make it, it would make it more exciting. Um, like, top is good in its own right, but um, if we add the three-point takedown, I think it's just going to add that little kind of a skill balance to an extent. Like, some people are really good at top and that's where a lot of the points come from but there's also people that are really good on the feet and now if i take you two times if i take you down two times that's six points i let you go at six to one you know what i mean mm-hmm. so if i'm not wrong yeah six to one so i think it makes it a lot more exciting i'm really hoping they do it do i think they will i don't think so but i mean we'll see all right and then second part um if you had to pick a winner between Coach Brian and Coach Carlo in a six-minute match, who are we uh, taking? Uh, <laughs> if maybe if he goes for Carlo's knees, you know, maybe maybe he might win. I'll but, tell my weak uh, points. <laughs> but uh, I don't really, I can't really say too much on that. I mean, hey, you know, Carlo is right there, right in front, front row seat. You can watch me wrestle uh, today against uh, you know, a guy that's not bad. So, how was that? You did good. Uh, I mean, we don't. It's okay. I mean, I think we, if Carlo and I ever actually do battle, I think it's going to be like the ending to uh, to Rocky Three. Uh, you know, <laughs> Age gonna, before beauty. We're just uh, going to both throw punches. Going to be locked in. Yeah, Brian, Brian wrestled. We were in the CSCB room, and yeah, he wrestled tough. We can't. We can't. We got to keep that in the room, though. It wasn't me. He was wrestling. It was. A, it was a pretty good high school kid. But we can't. Like we can't say how that went. I like it. Um, I look forward to uh, Miguel coming back after like a year or two of college and just dismantling (laughs) both of you guys. I mean, me too. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny. I actually told that that same high school kid today. He's like, hey, he actually kind of apologized. He's like, hey, when I come back, because we both wrestled him a little bit. He's like, when I come back, you know, I'll be a lot better. Sorry. I was like, dude, I hope you come back better and kick our butts. That's the whole point, man. Yeah. I hope Miguel does the same thing. I'm sure he will. I have to turn it up in the room as with the high schoolers because I, I don't want to give them an inch. And I try to be the guy who doesn't give up a point and <laughs> make your life a living hell. Cause that's how my high school coach was to me. Um, he didn't let me score and it made me better. And I know Beeman's coach was the same. Um, but I mean, after you guys go to college and you guys come back after a few years and you're going to be more physically mature, you're going to have more tricks in your bag. You're going to be scrapping with some of the best guys in the country. I'm going to expect to be, you're going to put it on us a little bit, you know, at that point. And then you might score a takedown, I guess it'll depend. Brian will have to be the judge of uh, if he lets you take him down or not. Hopefully I can be there for it. That'd be pretty cool. I'll come up. Yeah, maybe uh maybe Miguel you'll do a, a camp and uh maybe we'll get uh we'll get some some uh some Granite Hills guys up there and get like wrecked. That. But um at that point, you know, we don't you wouldn't want to hurt yourself like you know, picking Sean up and slamming him and then up, you know, maybe maybe hurting your pinky or something like that. That'd um, be unfortunate. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that. You'd but, you'd uh, actually be surprised at how much takedowns we give up in the room, Sean. Really? Oh well oh, I- yeah. Yeah. Carlo, Carlo gives us some takedowns too. On purpose or not? I said we. I said we. Oh, I uh, thought you said me. No, no, no. Like me, we, like you, we. you, me, yeah, us, you and I. We, we. But uh, Miguel, I have another. I have a. I have a question. Um, so, so Carver Ohaka, they do. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do walkout songs. Um, what is your walkout song going to be, and why? Um, I okay, you know, uh. Walkout song? I don't really do they do walkout songs? They do walkout songs. I'm pretty sure they do walkout songs. Yeah. Oh. For each wrestler? Oh. Uh no, every other wrestler usually. So 49s, 25s. Oh uh, no, he'd get skipped over. So yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> uh I don't know. Um if if I'm being serious, it would probably be that after dark one that I posted on my story. Um if I could do any song, uh, I don't think they would allow me to do those songs. So, right. what's the name of the song? After Dark. 
yeah you don't have to play that it's just <laughs> no, no, no! It doesn't have to be played. It just has. It, I was just letting you know that day. It makes me feel like really emo, so you don't have to play that. It's okay. I like it. I like it. Well, you guys got anything else, coaches? Orn? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you guys a shout out real quick. Uh, I've been telling Brian that the podcast blew up on the last episode. You guys yeah. check the views. Yeah, lots of views and lots of comments. Yeah. Keep you watching, guys. Keep watching. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to post something on uh, the natural. Hawkeye forum uh, and just be like, you know, look at these, you know, nit, nit, ninnies, whatever's. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't want to come across as that. So I figure this is good timing for Miguel's podcast and, uh, you know, get the potential Iowa fans hopefully off my back a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's fun, man. And Miguel, I'm just, I'm glad, I'm grateful you're able to come on. Um, you know, I know it's a little bit late, uh, so just tomorrow, just make sure you're awake and you don't fall asleep in my class and, uh, make sure you get your work done. I will. I promise. Hey, you know, we moved wrestling IQ to the morning, right? Uh, I wasn't informed. Uh, well, you got, you got to check, check the groupie, I man. I don't use, I don't use my phone that much. You were uh, just informed right now. Yep. I don't know. You're on your phone in class a lot, so. He's busy. We'll see friends. you. We'll see you there next Wednesday at seven forty-five, Migo. Okay, I'm back. Thanks again, Miguel. This was awesome. Um, congratulations! Super stoked to watch you. Um, you know, finish out your high school career and go on and do great things uh, as a Hawkeye. Um, and hopefully, we get to watch you um, win a national title in college. That'd be awesome. No, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. All right. All right there, guys.